Hello, my name is Radhuk Chaudhuri. I am a writer based in Calcutta. I have published a couple of novels, short story collections, uh, a translated work and also a edited uh, speculative fiction collection from Asia. Uh, we are passing through a very difficult time and I hope all of you are safe and uh, following the government's lockdown guidelines. I believe we will all come out of this uh, very soon, but we have to be uh, following whatever the government has been telling us, uh, especially the lockdown guidelines and protect the elderly. Uh, today uh, we will be taking a bit of a refuge in the past through the book that I am going to read to you, but uh, I also believe that the future, the post-coronavirus world would be a better place and would, we would be treating uh, softer on the earth in that new world that awaits us on the other side of this darkness. So having said that, uh, let me introduce to you this new book of mine, it's called Calcutta Nights. It's a translated work uh, published by Niyogi Books. I uh, translated it last year. Uh, the, the original uh, the author is Hemendra Kumar Roy, the famous Bengali uh, writer who has written uh, children's books, horror, science fiction supernatural stories and several other genres. In fact, uh, the Hindi movie Bissal Bad uh, was also based on one of his stories. But this is his memoir. He used to roam about Calcutta late in the night in the early 1900s, only armed with what he says uh, was a small stick. And he used to visit all kinds of forbidden and interesting places from uh, bordellos to uh, theatre halls to uh, crematoriums. Beggars, hovels, and several other places, Kunda's dens. It's a very interesting book. Uh, it has been compared to the well known Hutum Pachan Naksha. If you had enjoyed Hutum Pachan Naksha, I think you will enjoy this book too. Uh, it's a sociological document also, and uh, even someone doing research in criminology will find material here that she can use. So with those words, I will read to you a bit from the middle of the book. Uh, this chapter is called Prostitute's Quarters and he is describing the scene there in the evening. Evening is a time for dressing up and bargaining in this market for beauty. The distinctiveness of these quarters of fallen women is not discernible during this time. The babus also have just arrived and perched themselves against the pillows Conversations are yet to turn interesting and the drink hasn't yet gone to the head. Therefore, it's reasonably quiet all around. But the climate here changes completely after 9 o'clock. Following the first and while the second peg is being poured into the glass, the babus begin to see the world through rose-tinted glasses. With the third peg, their bodies seem to get charged with the fresh blood of youth. The music of the harmonium, singing and hideous cries of applause from every room on both sides of the streets enlivens the neighborhood. Somewhere the BB wearing tinkling anklets, setting the glass of drink on her head, gesturing delicately with her eyes, brows, lips and hands and swinging her body begins a slow sensuous dance. The babu begins to play the harmonium and the hired tabla player of the babu's flunky joins him on the tabla bobbing his head to the beat, and seeing this, flocks of the curious assemble outside the window or the doorway. Meanwhile, on a sudden impulse of intoxication, the Babu fancies dancing too. Pushing away the harmonium, he jumps up to join the Bibi, and standing beside her, he wraps the pleated end of his dhuti around his head like a woman's veil, and breaks out in a hoarse voice song, accompanied by a mad dance. And right after that, getting carried away by emotions, he tries to embrace and kiss the baby and inevitably the glass of drink on her head falls and shatters to pieces. Oh no, my glass is broken. Let it be, you dance. Oh dear, my new glass. Damn your glass, you think I am that sort of a babu. One is gone, you will have ten more. Hey bearer, bearer. Huzu, the bearer appears. Get a dozen glasses, take this. A tenor is flung at him, the beer sniggers and leaves. Now come close to me, give me a... Babu draws his face close to the bibi. Oh, what are you doing? No, come on, I swear I will die. 
oh bother, got saddled with a real drunkard. There are people here. Damn it, people. All of you close your eyes. What, you haven't yet? I shall hit you with this soda bottle. The tabla player, the flunky and the friends quickly shut their eyes. When from the few faint but telltale sounds they realize that the episode of kissing has been safely executed, they slowly open their eyes. Sing another song, my darling. The way you are screaming, how can one sing in this rakas? No, no, here I am sitting quiet, will not utter another word. Again the singing starts. Kete diye premier ghuri abar keno lotke dhoro, akta ne pi boja gache tomar shutur manja khoro. Having snapped all ties of this love kite, why again must you grasp? One long pull was enough to show that your string was much too sharp. Kulfi Malai and Ice, a lone peddler, sings out from the street. Ice? Hey you Ice! The singing is disrupted again. Inside other rooms of the house at this time, fierce quarrels might have broken out between a group of inebriated baboos and some other Bibi and her mother. In a neighboring room, the fixed time Babu might have appeared at the appointed hour and found some other man in his room, well settled, leaning on a pillow and at apparent ease. Immediately, the fixed time Babu begins to slap and beat up the Bibi, and sensing more trouble, the other Babu bolts like an arrow. The angry shouts of the Babu and the howling of the Bibi animate the whole place. Mingling with this are the sounds of female voices singing from other rooms, thunderous rolls of laughter and cries of applause. Usually, scenes similar to these are reenacted every night at the abodes of a fallen woman. This is what they call amot or merrymaking. This is what Babus go mad for. However, there are exceptions to this. Truly, in quite a few houses of these fallen women, there is cultivation of serious vocal and instrumental music and dance. There is hardly any trouble there and the Babus are also quiet and decent. As the night progresses, the Bibis and the Babus get more affected by intoxication. By then, the Tabla player, having collected his remuneration, has fled relieved. The Tabla and the Baya roll on the bed, lying on their sides or appended. Yet, the Bibis singing does not show any signs of stopping. But no one can tell whether those notes in a voice distorted by liquor is really some song or wailing or the cries of some creature hoarser than an owl. The Babu also under heavy intoxication dozes off and from time to time wakes up with a start, opening his eyes wide and crying out expressions of applause. Kya baat! Brilliant and out of this world. Tofa! Priceless! Ah, Morejai! Oh, that did me in! Ba, 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 ba! Bahut achha! Bravo! Awesome! So, I will leave you here. I hope uh, you will enjoy this book. You will find it in Oxford bookstores. And be safe. And, uh, follow the government's instructions. And in the post-coronavirus world, please try to take care of the environment. Let's tread softer on this planet of ours because we only have one planet. Thank you. Bye-bye.